Mother Nature can be a fickle mistress, whether it be wildfires in California, tsunamis in Japan, or hurricanes in the Atlantic. Still, few destructive forces are as familiar to the Western Hemisphere as the tornado. As one of nature's most destructive forces, tornadoes carve scars into grasslands, turn ramshackle barns into kindling, and claim the lives of many inside a spinning spiral of death. It was only a matter of time before Hollywood used this lethal weapon phenomenon as an unstoppable antagonist for one of the most memorable action films of the 90s. Strap in, grab hold of something sturdy, and watch out for flying cows. I gotta go, Julia, we got cows. Because we're looking back at director Jan de Bont's 1996 disaster epic, Twister. The first half of the 1990s spoiled action fans with genre-defying classics like Paul Verhoeven's Total Recall, Catherine Bigelow's Point Break, James Cameron's Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and DeBont's 1994 thrill ride, Speed, starring a young Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. You're crazy. You're crazy. Oh, no. Poor people are crazy, Jack. I'm eccentric. In 1992, writer Jeffrey Hilton presented Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment with a 10-page story about a group of storm chasers called Catch the Wind. Hilton's pitch swept up Spielberg, leaving the legendary filmmaker spinning with ideas about a Category F5 tornado ripping through cinemas and laying waste to the box office. With stars and debris in his eyes, Spielberg contacted Jurassic Park and Westworld writer Michael Crichton and his actress wife Anne Marie Martin to adapt Hilton's story. The couple cashed a check for $2.5 million to pen the screenplay, making Twister the most expensive script in cinematic history up until that point in time. Produced by Amblin Entertainment as part of a financial partnership with Warner Brothers Pictures and Universal Pictures, Spielberg thought about directing Twister. However, he opted for an executive producer position instead and opened the floor to his fellow creatives in the industry. Spielberg's buddy and Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis considered taking on the project, with notable names like James Cameron, John Bedham, and even Tim Burton in contention. Ultimately, Dutch filmmaker Jan de Bont accepted the gig, whose eye for action gave moviegoers the gift of speed in 1994. Fortuitously, de Bont was in the midst of a transition after exiting the production of Godzilla due to creative differences. Disaster film extraordinaire Roland Emmerich eventually boarded the bastardization of Japan's legendary Lizard King, but that's a video for another time. Oh man, this is the fun part, sweetheart. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, click the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. We've got lots of original movie-related content across the Joe Blow Movie Network, so feel free to explore our other channels as well. Now back to the show. Despite the combined writing prowess of Crichton and Martin, other writers joined the project to polish the couple's work. Enter Joss Whedon, a favored fix-it writer for screenplays needing polish. Hey, these guys are professionals. They're the best. Come on, they're not lying down on the job. Whedon, whose signature style rings throughout contemporary pop culture touchstones like Marvel's Avengers and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, started rewriting the material until bronchitis forced him to surrender the gig to Schindler's List scribe Steven Zalian. Whedon eventually returned. However, production was already in effect, making changes difficult to manage with wheels already in motion. Finally, Catch Me If You Can writer Jeff Nathanson joined the team as a script doctor and remained on the project until filming was complete. Jan de Bond's Twister provides audiences with a front row seat aboard a roller coaster of action and special effects. The story takes place in Oklahoma, along Tornado Alley, during what meteorologists refer to as storm season. Due to changes in Earth's weather patterns, storm season has shifted throughout the years. Today, storm season rages from June to November, with October being a particularly nasty period in this often destructive sequence. This is gonna be a long day. Twister introduces audiences to a misfit group of storm chasers led by Dr. Joanna Harding, played by Mad About You actor Helen Hunt. 
Wasn't there a Melinda in there somewhere? No, there's only been Melissa since you. All right, not much for browsing, are you? With storm season in full effect, the goal of Dr. Harding's crew is for the successful launch of Dorothy, a capsule-like device capable of launching weather sensors to map seemingly unpredictable tornado patterns. Bill Paxton's Bill Harding, a retired storm chaser and Dr. Joanna Harding's soon-to-be ex-husband, is swept up in the launch of this history-making device. It's the same as it was in December. I didn't read it in December. Christ, would you just sign it so we can get out of here? Bill is looking to finalize his divorce from Joe and start a new life as a weatherman with his fiance, Dr. Melissa Reeves, played by the Lost Boys actor, Jamie Gertz. You know what, honey? I find this kind of interesting. I'm going to tag along. However, once Bill realizes the Dorothy prototype he designed is complete, he rejoins the effort to make history before a rival gang of scientists, led by Carrie Elways as Dr. Jonas Miller, can beat them to the punch using a similar device. Device. So stick around, because the days of sniffing the dirt are over. After several failed attempts at launching Dorothy into the whirling maws of menacing windstorms, the storm chasers learn that an F5 level tornado is fast approaching. With two Dorothy devices left, Bill and Joe run headlong into the belly of the beast, hoping the last minute changes they've made to the machine yield successful results. After the storm, an alarming amount of devastation, the destruction of Bill's engagement, and the revitalization of a failed partnership, Twister winds to an intense finale that leaves you feeling more blown away than the guy in the Max Hell commercial from 1992's Stay Tuned. While writers and production managers were hard at work, casting agents for Twister encountered challenges at nearly every turn. Before the role of Dr. Joe Harding went to Helen Hunt, Jurassic Park standout Laura Dern, Bridget Fonda, and Kate Mulgrew almost wore the good doctor's white tank top and reinforced mud stompers. Initially, Tom Hanks eyed the role of Bill Harding, but ultimately felt Twister wasn't the right fit for his brand of character creation. Other actors for Bill Harding include Kevin Costner, Michael Keaton, Kurt Russell, Richard Gere, John Cusack, Bruce Willis, Nicolas Cage, and Val Kilmer. That's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Mimic and Mighty Aphrodite actor Mira Sorvino nearly played Dr. Melissa Reeves. However, after she refused to dye her hair, Jamie Gertz joined the Storm Chasers for their history-making mission. House actor Hugh Laurie almost played Elways' Dr. Jonas Miller, and even Alec Baldwin nearly starred as the invisible mustache-twirling meteorologist. Can you actually predict tornadoes now? Well, no, they are very, very unpredictable. As some of my more unfortunate colleagues found out earlier on today. Ugh, turn him off. But Finally, country singer Garth Brooks almost played Dusty, the overly enthusiastic storm chaser wildly acted by Philip Seymour Hoffman. According to reports, Brooks abandoned the opportunity after discovering the tornado is the film's star, not him. All right, move it, Dusty. It's intense. It's intense. Once all was said and done, Twister pulled an impressive number of notable actors into orbit. In addition to the core cast members, Twister stars Ferris Bueller's Day Off actor Alan Ruck, the People Under the Stairs mischief maker Sean Whalen, Lost and God of War actor Jeremy Davies, and a glut of other talents in Lois Smith, Scott Thompson, Joey Slotnick, Wendy Josepher, Zach Greiner, Patrick Fischler, and even Todd Field, whose body of work in Hollywood has grown by leaps and bounds since his tornado chasing days. His latest achievement includes serving as the director and writer of Tar, the biographical drama starring Kate Blanchett as Lydia Tar, the first female director of a major German orchestra. <laughs> Initially, Twister was going to shoot in the United Kingdom and California, but DeBont insisted on filming in Oklahoma. In a 2020 interview with Vulture, DeBont said Twister might be the last great action movie not shot on a soundstage, tipping his hat to a bygone era of primarily practical effects and on-location filming. DeBont positioned his crew all over the state, setting up shots in places like Fairfax, Ralston, Caw Lake, and Stillwater, Oklahoma. DeBont got locals involved in the production when the crew moved to Wakita, where Lois Smith's character serves the meanest steak and eggs in Tornado Alley. Where'd you get all this beef? Did you see my cows out front? No. Oh! oh. 
In addition to filming around town, the studio demolished a defunct portion of the area, making that section look like it fought an F4 tornado and lost. The studio welcomed many locals onto the set and paid them $100 daily to be extras in the film. Once filming was complete, DeBont carted everyone off to Iowa for the film's grand finale involving a catastrophic F5 tornado sequence. At times, filming for Twister resulted in more turbulence than a raging tsunami. Stupid. The list of personal injuries or illnesses to the cast and crew is extensive. Still, let's take a look at the highlight reel, shall we? Partly through filming, Hunt and Paxton experienced retinal damage and were temporarily blinded after prolonged exposure to reflections from a lighting rig. The duo also needed hepatitis shots after romping around in a filthy ditch for several hours. The hits don't stop there, seeing as Hunt hit her head numerous times, possibly resulting in a concussion. DeBont reportedly shrugged Hunt's injuries off, labeling her clumsy. Hunt disagrees when the subject of her injuries comes about, often noting that DeBont's keen direction led to her eyes getting baked inside her skull. While we're talking about DeBont, this feels as good a time as any to mention that he wasn't particularly well-liked by cast and crew members. There are several stories about DeBont's behavior on the Twister set, including a disturbing altercation when he knocked a camera assistant to the ground in anger. Due to his unhinged aggression, cinematographer Don Burgess noped out of the project, leaving Jack N. Green to pick up the baton. Unfortunately, Green was injured during filming and needed hospitalization. Tired of playing musical chairs on his own film, DeBont took over as the film's director of photography. Beyond health and safety hazards, unpredictable weather, and creator clashes, Twister soon encountered a more significant problem. On April 19, 1995, a domestic terrorist bombing occurred at the Alfred P. Murrah Building in Oklahoma City. The senseless bombing killed 168 people, injured more than 680 others, and reduced more than one-third of the building to rubble and cinders. Because of the tragedy, Warner Brothers suspended Twister's production, so members of the cast and crew could travel to the site of the attack and help the recovery teams. After the delay, production on Twister resumed. Unfortunately, only some were having fun making the film. For what is often referred to as one of the most notorious feuds in Hollywood history, reports of Paxton and Hunt not getting along are well known. You would never know this based on the duo's on-screen chemistry, but it's true. When Universal Studios built the Twister, Ride It Out theme park attraction, neither Paxton nor Hunt wanted to act alongside their co-star in the ride's intro video. The couple filmed their parts separately, even though their characters interact with one another in the footage. While we're on the topic of animosity, Hunt notoriously hated working on Twister. Aside from finding Paxton challenging to tolerate, the film took a significant physical toll on its stars. Hunt endured several injuries, infections, and less than ideal filming conditions throughout production. Speaking with the Huffington Post, she described the film as a nightmare. She also noted that she was pelted with giant balls of ice and shot with a fire hose while filming. Quote, I was really happy to make it through in one piece, end quote. Hunt told the Post about her Twister experience. If you want to get nostalgic, pop the Twister soundtrack into your headphones and crank the volume to 11. Ah! Woo! In addition to an orchestral score by Mark Mancina, the film released a soundtrack that's so 90s, it'll have you looking for a chain wallet and thermal to wear beneath your vintage Nirvana t-shirt. Whipping up a storm of sonic sounds for the Twister soundtrack are Van Halen, Rusted Root, Tori Amos, Soul Asylum, Belly, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Goo Goo Dolls, and more. Many wrote songs exclusively for the film, with Eddie and Alex Van Halen performing the instrumental theme song, Respect the Wind. Upon release, Twister took the box office by storm. The film opened with 41.1 million from 2,414 markets, casting a banishing spell on Andrew Fleming's supernatural horror film, The Craft for the top spot. After moving around the charts for several weeks, Twister ended its theatrical run with 494.5 million in returns, becoming the second highest grossing film of 1996, right behind Roland Emmerich's uber patriotic disaster film, Independence Day. That's what I call a close encounter. 
When the time came for Twister to wreak havoc in homes worldwide, it did so as the first film released on DVD. VHS and Laserdisc versions of de Bont's disaster piece blew onto the home market, though the DVD version was considered a technological milestone. The film performed well during award season, garnering two Oscar nominations for Best Sound and Best Visual Effects. While the movie lost the Best Sound category to The English Patient, and the Best Visual Effects category to Independence Day, it did take home a BAFTA award for Best Special Visual Effects. What? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if uh, <clears throat> we are going to chase this tornado or if you just want to catch the next one. Shit! In late 2022, Minari director Lee Isaac Chung became attached to Twisters, a sequel to the original Twister. Sequel? with Helen Hunt possibly returning as Dr. Joanna Harding. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say Helen Hunt might be coming back? That's what the whispers would have us believe, even after the nightmare experience of making the first film. The script by Mark L. Smith focuses on the daughter of Bill and Joe Harding, who has caught the same storm chaser bug that her parents did. Twisters is being fast-tracked to rip through cinemas in 2024. Yeah, baby! Despite a torrent of behind-the-scenes shenanigans, Twister remains a high watermark for disaster cinema. It might have been challenging to film, but the peppering of practical effects, off-the-charts character chemistry, and thrilling depiction of Mother Nature throwing hands makes Twister one of Hollywood's most memorable films. Do my favorite Helen Hunt movie is oh! Twister! <laughs> I'm excited to report the movie still holds up after 26 years, even if the effects industry has grown by leaps and bounds. Let's face it, sometimes less is more, and Twister comes by its action and emotion honestly while pushing the limits of 1990s filmmaking techniques. After revisiting the film, I'll be damned if I don't want to go for a drink with Philip Seymour Hoffman's Dusty. His unbridled enthusiasm for danger in the face of progress is infectious, and one of my most cherished performances by the late actor. I also want to give it up for Jamie Gertz's Dr. Melissa Reeves, who, despite nearly being eaten by a tornado and enduring her fiancé's buffoonery for most of the film, kept her composure in the face of ludicrousness. She more than earns her flowers, as far as I'm concerned. With so many performances, characters, and harrowing moments to love, Twister is a prime example of extreme filmmaking yielding rip-roaring results that stand the test of time. If you plan to revisit Twister, prepare to get blown away all over again. Hey, Joe and Bill, check out that sky! You know what, I think we've seen enough.